Hi, I'm Dr. Roberta Shaler, the Relationship Help Doctor. And I thought you might want to just have a really strong description of what it feels like to have a hijackle in your life. Because if it feels like this, that's what's going on for you. So if you have a hijackal in your life, they charmed you, I, I hesitate to say charmed the pants off you early on. Um, you actually felt that they just knew you better than anyone else. You were astonished at how well they could anticipate your needs and how attentive and wonderful they were. And you weren't noticing that they were trying to quickly move you to a place of being connected to them, just them, uh, being committed to them, maybe pushing you to move in or get engaged or get married quickly. And you're all in this wonderful hormone haze and you think this is fabulous. And both of you are just so perfect for each other that your rose-colored glasses are working overtime and you fail to see the red flags. And you can't be blamed for that because that's the whole purpose of the hijackal is to have that actual experience with you so they can get you. And once they get you, every day thereafter will be a gotcha. They will find something to complain about, something to make you wrong about, something they don't like. You make an agreement with a hijackal and you think you've got it nailed down. And when it comes time to enact that agreement, they say, I would never have agreed to that. What were you thinking? There you go again, making things up. Now you'll begin to see that this may sound familiar to you because this is what they do. So a hijackal has to win. You've, read, you've heard that in my videos, read that in what I've written. And so think about how that feels. If every time you go to bring up something, like even setting the table, and you have a disagreement because the hijackal has to win, you begin to question your sanity and second guess yourself. And that's not a good place to be because the feelings that go along with that are defeating. And the more you try to please, because you're a good person, a nice person, you're trying to extend yourself, you're trying to make the relationship work, the more you try to please that person, the pickier they get, and the moodier they get. And just when you think you know exactly what they like, they change their mind, because hijackals have to win. So if you thought that you were going to please a hijackal by doing something, they would recognize that immediately, and they would now not be pleased by that because they would then have nothing to focus on, nothing to make you wrong for. So being with a hijackal is a crazy-making experience. And it starts sometimes slowly, you know, a little slip of the tongue, a little rude comment here and there, and you say, ouch, and they apologize. But pretty soon it escalates. And it starts to seep through your relationship into different places. And you've probably noticed that being with a hijackal is a frustrating experience in this way because they treat you at home in ways that nobody else ever sees. And that's very, very purposeful on their part because they can keep you down. They can keep you uncertain. Hijackals traffic and uncertainty and guilt. And as long as they can keep things vague and uncertain so that you never are walking on anything but eggshells, then they feel they have control over you. And they do, right? And that's how you feel. You feel controlled. You feel uncertain. Like, how can I... How can I move? In which direction can I move to be safe? That's what it feels like to be with a hijackal. And then you can't trust them when they're not with you because they say things that are outrageous. And then you hear about them when you say that they're not true. Damage already done. So you can feel very alone. And that's one of the hallmarks of a hijackal in the treatment of their partner, not just within themselves, but in the treatment of their partner. They want to cull you from the herd. They want to separate you from your friends. They want to separate you from what you knew as your reality and create a reality for you. And you know that you've, you've seen one of my videos on gaslighting. Well, gaslighting is when they want to tell you what your reality is. Even though you don't agree, even it's, though it's not what you sensed or experienced or went through, they will tell you what it is that happened, and they will try to get you to, to feel like you're going a little crazy. 
And that's how they, they traffic in uncertainty. Another way that hijackals make you feel is small. It's the little looks. It's the little put downs. It's the snide remarks. It's the supposedly funny one-liners in front of people that they hope that they know you well enough that you won't respond negatively to. And then you're beginning to show the world that it's all right with you that a hijackal has you trapped because you don't respond to those zingers and the one-liners and the dirty looks because of course you're that nice good person who's not going to make waves and I want to invite you to think about the fact that you can be a nice good assertive person you have that right you have the right to be nice and good and assertive all at the same time and assertive simply means that you know that you deserve to take up space and draw breath, that you can say how you think, what you feel, what you need, and what you want without speaking about anybody else, just within you. You know what you think, feel, need, and want, and you're willing to say so. We get into trouble when we impute motive to other people or we blame people or accuse people or suggest that they made us feel a certain way because that's never true. However, you absolutely have the right to be assertive, to say, I think this, I feel this, I need this, I want this. And you're not saying from you or you're not saying anything about another human being. It's talking about what's going on with you. And I have two chapters on that in my book, Kaizen for Couples. And what I call this is the personal weather report. You're giving a personal weather report. What's going on in here? And you have that right. And that's what it means to be assertive. So if any of these things that I'm saying are what's going on within you, if you're feeling these ways, you're feeling the put down, you're feeling the degraded, you're feeling the belittling, you're feeling the dismissing as if you don't matter, the invalidating, sit up and think about that. It's not that you are a bad person. It's not that you're not thoughtful or considerate, good or nice. It is that you're not assertive. It is that you're not setting boundaries. And when I work with my clients, the very first thing that I have, and you know I work with the, with the people who are the partners, the exes, and the adult children of chronically difficult people that I call hijackals. When I'm first working with those people, it's really important for them to do their own work, to be able to accord themselves the right to be assertive. And sometimes that's so lost and so buried so deeply that we have to work to bring it to the surface, says, who am I now? Because other people have been telling you who you are and you've been believing them. Not happily, but you've been believing them. And you've been thinking you're stuck and you're not. So if these things are feeling true for you and you know you're with the hijackal, let's work together. Take advantage of my free half hour consultation to find out if we're a good fit. And then be prepared to come along to a eight or 15 week session or 15 session program with me so that this will never be happening to you again. You will get back your sense of self. You will learn to be assertive once more and take back your life. I look forward to talking to you soon.